Even then, they would be they would be almost invisible amid the stars. But slowly they emerge from the dark, tiny dim blurs. Since they're so much closer to Earth than the stars, they seem to streak through the sky. In 1989, other astronomers captured the first ever close-up of an asteroid using a giant radar dish. This huge rock was more than a mile across. Later radar images showed even more ominous asteroids. Mountains tumbling through space. Tutatis, a giant boulder doing 70,000 miles an hour, regularly cuts across the path of the Earth. 951 Gaspara, first of only two asteroids ever to be actually photographed, is as large as the island of Manhattan. Two four three IDA is more than twice as large. Like Gaspara, it isn't an Earth crosser. But if it were, it could blast a hole as wide as the state of Texas. Gene didn't make it to the moon, but together with Carolyn, he's discovered scores of new celestial bodies. Between them, they found hundreds of asteroids and dozens of comets and helped transform the map of the sky. The solar system would never again seem stable or predictable. The harmony of the planets turned into a threatening cacophony. What we've been able to show using this good old telescope right here and by concentrating on surveying a near region around the Earth, we've been able to show that the Earth revolves around the Sun in its own swarm of asteroids. These things will hit the Earth in the future. They have hit the Earth in the past. These are the Earth-crossing asteroids. In the 1980s, new evidence emerged of the terrible threat impact poses to life on Earth. Deep beneath Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula is a 190-mile wide crater made by a 100 million megaton impact. It dates to the time 65 million years ago when two-thirds of all living species, including the dinosaurs, disappeared from the face of the planet. On March the 22nd, 1989, an asteroid came within six hours of striking the Earth, but was not detected until much later. Other asteroids have come even closer. One would have hit the Earth if it had come just four hours sooner. I don't think that people took the notion of, of the hazard of, of impact seriously uh, in the early days of our, of our work here. Uh, first of all, it took a while for the news to get out. The news that would change everything began to break on the night of March the 23rd, 1993. The shoemakers and their collaborator David Levy decided to take some pictures of the sky despite persistent clouds. This was not a good night for observing, much less for making historic discoveries. Five, four, three, two, one. Open. I'm on. Okay, you're on. I could hardly see the star I was supposed to be following because Jupiter was so close that the glare of the big planet was, was swamping the eyepiece. Okay. Okay. I started to examine the film, looking at all the things that I knew would be there, the ghost image of Jupiter and the spikes from that we see on the films when we've got a very bright star or a bright planet. And then I started to go by something, and I thought, that's a galaxy? No, that's not a galaxy. 
and here was this most unusual looking object. And I thought, it looks like a comet. It looked like a comet, all right, except it was a comet that was stretched out. Our films don't have enough resolution to really see what the details are, because we're covering a big area of the sky, and so the comet's actually quite tiny. The team called their friend, astronomer Jim Scotty, who was manning a more powerful telescope, and asked him to check their finding. He promised to call back as soon as his telescope could be repositioned. Well, by now, it's about two hours that has gone by. And then I decided the time had come. Jim had had enough time to take a look, and I called Jim Scotty, and he answered the phone in a voice that I had never heard before. And I said, Jim, are you okay? And he says, uh, yes. David, the sound you heard is me trying to pick my jaw off the floor. And I said, do we have a comet? And he said, boy, do you have a comet. And he started describing what he saw and I was repeating everything to the two of you and every sentence it had these five tails at least five discrete nuclei but he said I think there's more and meantime that music we had we had just had Beethoven's first symphony that was playing in in our room just happened to be on and the fourth movement started and it starts with this very slow little introduction As just as, as Jim said, boy, do you have a comet. Then the symphony went into its full motion. And then right at that point, Jim says, boy, do you have a comet. The comet, essentially an asteroid with a long tail of dust and gas, had been torn into several pieces by Jupiter's gravity. Of course, the big kicker, the, the big news that it was going to hit Jupiter didn't arrive until about six weeks later. Here is this man looking at a computer screen and it's saying, your comet with your name on it is going to collide with Jupiter in 14 months. And Gene was sitting there and he was looking at it in his he was shaking his head and he said, I don't believe it. I'm going to see an impact in my lifetime. I just don't believe this. Now the question is, what was, what was going to happen? Were we going to have a big show or was it going to be something that no one could see? Even as Shoemaker Levy 9 approached Jupiter, some eminent scientists remained skeptical it would make much of an impact. Many astronomers believed the giant planet would swallow the comet into its vaporous depths. 1994, when the comet's leading fragment was due to cross Jupiter's path, scientists and reporters gathered at the headquarters of the Hubble Space Telescope. Gene found an empty office to call for news from distant ground-based telescopes. We have heard that there have been some observations from Spain. Dan? In which a, uh, I want to hear that. Uh, what we're, the question is, uh, how soon will Brian be releasing that? There would be no reliable data until the Hubble team downloaded the day's first images of Jupiter. And they did in fact detect the plume. In the auditorium, Gene had little more information than the gathered reporters. We all take these reports very carefully and cautiously at this time. They need to be confirmed. The tiny spot on Jupiter was in fact a fiery plume, about half the size of the Earth. I'd like to introduce Dr. Heidi Hamill. We just downloaded the first two orbits, which I have a raw laser printer output, this is as raw as it gets, um, we can actually see the impact site itself. And I'll remind you, this is for A, the first one, not the brightest one. So we're going to have a really exciting week. 